All right, guys, how are you guys doing? Welcome to, to the MFW show, or I recently call it MCS Weekly. Every week we do this show on Wednesday. I'm trying to get about 4.30. Uh, last couple weeks, I was able to kind of hit on top of the uh, timeline, but today, a little bit off, about half an hour. So um, welcome, guys, to uh, the show this week. Uh, Larry, Peter, Daniel, um, Felix, good to see you guys. So. Um, Operation Annual 9. So it's coming up very quickly. Um, originally, every year we do it at um, the first week of October, and we kind of move it later in the uh, uh, in the month because it's getting um, warm. Um, this year, we are originally going to have um, another group doing it. Mike Lovato, one of our um, uh, former guy here that was running the event last year, and uh, he kind of able not able to do this year so it's gonna come back to us and we're gonna do it at USPN uh, I'm sorry you <laughs> United um, paintball local down here so USPN paintball down in Hollister um, they'll be hosting it and we're gonna be part of it Brett man how are you doing Jimmy good to see you guys Thomas um, Victor so if you guys are looking to do an event out in the West Coast and want to play um, Operation and War. It's not like the one we normally do in Copperopolis at the abandoned copper mine. This is the one where uh, it's at the field this time. The last couple years we doing at copper in Copperopolis. It is really hard. Um, basically, you got a piece of land and we have to set everything up. We have to bring air, paint, um, be there like a, a couple days before. Cut out all the uh, wild grass and. I mean, it's a lot of work, so we decided that um, it's uh, we. I mean, we could not handle the um, the amount of uh, logistic that required to do every year. So that's why we kind of pass on to other individual individual to do it, but um, it doesn't go through. So this this year, it's coming back to us. We can do a little bit. Um, if you guys have never been to USPN, it's a great field. The way I mean, it's the the, the CQ, It's more like a secure city, um, really small, compact little field, and the layout is really nice. So you have the central area where you put, um, you, you prepped, um, and we have the vendor area there, and then surrounding the vending area, there are gonna be a bunch of little fields, and the game gonna be all day long, and fast, quick games. A little bit different from the norm that we do in war where the the field it's like 500 acres and you can walk for like a mile before you can see anybody and then it takes you another mile to walk back before you can, you can can get your air this way i mean this is smaller um setup and you can go um walk like you know 100 yards and you go in the game you should should, should have a great time come out reload go back in there so uh like i said it's gonna be a little bit different oh javier how are you doing jeff jordan uh, Rashid, uh, Johnny, Jared, Brandon, good to see all you guys. Um, glad to see you. Uh, it's uh, been a week. It's been <laughs> Arsenal, man, uh, 10 bucks, a little bit early. Have not gone there yet, <laughs> but we'll get there. Um, if you guys have any question about NWAR, um, let me know. I'm gonna go a little bit. Um, I know a lot of you guys are on the East Coast and Midwest somewhere and international. You can't come out to an event like this. But um, it's if you want to have do a Mac Fed game and it's a little bit different from the norm, you have to check out Operation in War. Uh, this is going this year going to be a ninth um, ninth year. I mean it's 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 actually one of the oldest Mac Fed um, event out there in the world. So we did one of the first Mac Fed event back in 2010, nine or ten, about ten, yeah, about ten, and it's been growing since. And since we did that event. Um, MacFed event has popped up everywhere. Now you can almost um, there's a MacFed event almost every weekend. So we we took it off. So you guys want to do? Let's do the auction and then we'll go talk more about the um, Operation One Nine. All right. So here, so this week auction is this Blizzard SG One um, built with a see uh, through carry handle and a see through um, rail right here you would actually uh, put your cheek right on the buttstock and you can see right through um, comes with a 2x42 red dot scope 
fully functional yes we want to do um upgrade to air tank you can do that as well let us know we can upgrade for you but this is the uh the auction for this week it's a beautiful build i shot this right before we get in the show i'm gonna play a video for you so you can see how it shoots and um so yes the function all right let's let me show you i'm gonna switch the camera really quick and then i'll play a video oh man all right here here we go uh this one right here uh, no thanks this is a brand new build with a new um, configuration with the rail and a carry handle or oh, the new lightning bolt handguard here so let's uh, see how it shoots got orange magazine so don't worry about the magazine back and back shoot all right shoots great so gonna swap out another magazine i love this clear magazine you can see the projectile in the magazine this way if you have a jam or a misfed or something like that you can see exactly what's going on um it looks pretty cool when you put into the um, your gun right there see how that is um you can see how many rounds you have and if you are changing projectile you see exactly what's going on there so let's uh stick some more target That's a pretty good shooter. All right, guys, if you have any question, comment. All right, guys, you see that video? Um, like I said, I just videoed that right before the show. Like I said, it kind of hit and miss sometimes. Each week, we have to decide what we're going to put on the show. So that's kind of a tough decision to make every week. We're going to know. Uh, we don't really know what we're going to put on until the... Um, like an hour before next we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a lobby tour for you guys our gun wall we just built a bunch of guns and we put in the wall so we're gonna go through the lobby for you so next week it's gonna be um, the gun wall tour all right red man uh, 120 all right man I know you won last week and you want to continue that, that streak <laughs> you can do it all right Daniel 130 for Daniel I'll pin on the top right here Ah oh, man, it's uh, this is like I said, this is actually a really nice build. The the way that we're um, we integrate this carry handle, it's like, kind of like that Destiny carry handle, but without that jazz to it. So fully rail on the top and pretty solid. So guess looking to get a Blizzard, this is set up for you. All right, Crippers, um, you got it, but oh Daniel, you guys on. How about a CQB one? Okay, well next week I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna have a bunch of guns on the wall and I'm gonna introduce pretty much um, about maybe 20 to 50 guns on the wall, maybe too many, but you guys kind of point out which one you guys wanna do for auction. Um, we can pull it off the wall and then auction off for you. Like I said, what we wanna do is we wanna keep the price range about you know 300 bucks so that way more people can participate. Um, we try not to do the high end one. What happens is it can really uh, keep a lot of people off of the bidding, uh, losing that opportunity to participate. So that's why I'm trying to build something that's kind of basic but actually good, um, medium, I'm kind of like a medium intermediate a little bit rather than just get something um, uh, out of the box, get used a little bit more. That's why each gun we, we we actually add. It's pretty. You have to think about it, right? It's the, you have the platform. And then you have to add a little more accessory to it, make it stand out. At the same time, you get an awesome deal when you auction it out. So that's our goal. But you know, it doesn't work every time. Some sometimes it's kind of like hit and miss. But what we're trying to do. Oh, oh, yeah. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful marker. All right, guys. Um, later, Jin. Well, Jin was here, so we were talking about the game. So, um. If you guys have any question, all person in war, um, let me know. I'm gonna pull up the flyer on that so you can discuss about a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, and then you can just talk about uh, how the game gonna be like. What kind of barrels on the blizzard? It is a CMI barrel. Um, this is one we got, we took over CMI about four years ago and then we have a lot of the barrels. So now we're gonna we use, this is a straight rifle barrel. It shoot really nice. I mean, you shoot. CMI probably makes the best barrel for round balls. They use this um, this track, kind of like a chain track. You have the groove and then you have to land. And so when you shoot projectile out, 
um, the, the ball actually get cushioned by the air on the groove so that way when the projectile exit the barrel it doesn't wobble doesn't kind of um, stray off it's actually come out pretty straight so you guys have a chance to shoot like a straight rifle barrel uh, for round balls they're probably the best one I've shot smoothbore barrel they're good but it, it's hit and miss sometimes and on a like consistent sh um, like consistency basis uh, I found that the straight rifle barrels are better for round balls and if you're shooting shape rounds or um, projectile that are not sphere um, spherical then it's better to use like a, um, a rifle barrel or kind of rotational rifling barrel then those actually work better right so kind of pull up I know you guys know a lot of you guys are out um, in the you know, far away and not able to come to offers anymore but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull up the page that way you can see um, what the, uh, the event is about and then you can see um, what we're gonna do for the event. All right, gonna pull it up right here and you can see what's going on. Right, this is Operation N War 9 and you guys can check it out. There's a little flyer. If you go to EOW 9, you can actually see the event. Um, this year, I got the feel to throw in a few things for you guys. Uh, $49 entry. It's a one day event, not a two days event like we normally do. And we got fuel paint only you get um, it's a Mac Fed event and you first strikes available for purchase all day air of <laughs> lunch included so it's pretty cool um, if you register before October 7th it's gonna be 49 bucks and if you're gonna register after October 7th a little bit more logistic work for us there it's gonna be $59 and then we are gonna be doing a 515 um, shooting competition so if you guys coming as a group or as a team you can uh, compete together as a team if you don't if you're not um, if you don't come together as a team and you're individual or two person what's not we have to put you into a team and you can actually compete as well so it's going to be a lot of fun um, we try and do something a little bit different than the norm so um, that's why uh, we put in a competition for you and of course look at the grand price the grand price is 5 PTR loaded it's going to be more than 5,000 bucks so if, you get, if your team looking to upgrade uh, for PTR, oh man, um, this is opportunity to do that, and uh, it's a prize that we put out. So hopefully, um, your team can compete and actually win that. It's gonna be really awesome grand prize there. Um, normally, you go to an event and people, I mean, most place, what they do is they 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 put prize. You have to kind of um, use a raffle ticket and you kind of draw it out on a lucky draw we kind of try not to do that we usually have some sort of competition we do ST the STO drill and you can win a prize or we do some sort of competition like the bounty and so on and so let people who uh, work and commit and want it to win the prize rather than just kind of our luck the job we, we, you know we're, we're trying to do things a little bit different than opposed to the norm everybody kind of have this pool prize and at the very end and just kind of randomly pick it out so uh, we're doing we do a competition, so you guys want to win the 5 PTR for the team, you have this opportunity to do that. Um, the gameplay can be a little bit different. Um, it is a CQB area, so it's gonna be, um, it's the type of game that fast moving, if you are, if you're good at snap shooting, then move while you shoot, this, your strength will definitely shine at this event um, because that's what then that's what real skill is because you have to move and shoot at the same time. You 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 have you have to be um, you have to be good because you have to calculate all these factors going on. You have to count the barriers, projectile, targets moving, um, reload. So it's going true test of skills right there. Uh, neat game like this on the East Coast. <laughs> well, um, there are a lot of games out there in the East Coast, but um, but we're like I said, we're trying to do differently, especially this. We have, I mean, I was trying to do a competition, but it's kind of hard to do at the Copper Mine because of the logistic. You have to set it up and you don't have the support of a field. This is one of the first, um, not one of the first, but the last five event that we did. This is one of the first one that's at a field. The first one was at Tag Paintball, second one was also Tag Paintball. 
The third one was a combat zone, I believe, up in somewhere north. I forget what the field they closed, and then subsequently after that, we did the um, the last four event in Copperopolis. Five event in Copperopolis, so up in one nine now at the field. So the field, of course, have more support. You have referee, you have dedicated people, field owner. You get everything there. You get air, you get paint, um, you get food. So it, it, you know, it's 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 not like Copperopolis where you have the rawness of the environment, um, but at the same time you don't have that luxury, and it's. It's um, it's a lot more of work for us to put that event together. So this event this year is a little more organized, a lot more support behind it to get the event up and running, and uh, uh, it's gonna run really smooth. And someone is asking about whether they're gonna be general. Right now we don't currently don't have general. So what we're thinking of doing is doing like a platoon leader. So you have a couple platoon leader that can work together with hand missions for you guys. So like I said, game on and it's going to be action 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 so like i said it's going to be a change of pace on what you usually play you have to walk 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 for like 20 minutes or sometimes half an hour or sometimes whatever that you have to walk and then you get some action and get shot to go back um this game is not going to be like that you're going to be walking like i said 100 feet into the game zone bum 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 do your um get your fix and then you come out you reload chat hang out a little bit you go in again and you know you have multiple fields um, playing at the same time, multiple mission. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's it's, it's one of those events where you're gonna go home satisfactory because you have a lot more trigger time than as opposed to you go to a big scenario event where the trigger time is way low. You have playing time, but trigger time, oh, that's a different story, right? Uh, game like this, all right. So who wants to be a ghost? <laughs> oh man, Junior. Uh, you, you're gonna have a lot of fun. I know. I, I'm sorry. You, you messaged me about a Barry. I'll message you later on that. Okay. So um, didn't have a chance to respond to you, but I got it. Uh, Peru. Well, if you guys set it up, um, then uh, we'll uh, we'll see what's going on, Cycle Lou. <laughs> so um, hey, put a Cycle Lou. Put a game together in Peru. Maybe the gang down here can head over there and uh, have an event. <laughs> Joseph, good to see you, buddy. Right, so uh, that is all person in War Nine, and you guys, uh, I know there, are a bunch of event going on, and we have to. The reason why we chose the October thirteenth because um, that first weekend October, I think four, five, six, the um, Kilo Six Nine in the East Coast is happening. I'm gonna be out there, and then uh, the. Um, 13th is the uh, event for Operation End War, and there's some other event after that weekend as well. So we decided. I, actually, I mentioned a couple of times that I'm gonna be at uh, Snake Eaters. I'm not gonna make it because of Operation End War 9. So if you guys um, need something for Snake Eater, let me know. That way I can um, schedule that in for you and get it out for you. But um, just to um, to be clear, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be missing Snack Eater again this year. Sketch is way too tight. I just got back from the um, just got back from uh, Kilo Six Nine, and the, you know, f right after that, I have um, Opposite End War, so I'm not gonna be able to make out there to you guys on in Texas. So hopefully next year the schedule will not so tight, and I'm you know I, I don't want to overbook myself and not able to put hundred percent. 110 percent so i want to able to kind of commit to what i can support that way um i can put all my effort in and trying to do both in three or four and and you know, fall short on my promises so sorry guys um hopefully uh next year the schedule kind of clear up a little bit so i can make it up there maybe um not able to make it to kill six nine next year and go to texas but also depends on the event um you know, see how many people show up. Um, it takes a lot of time and a way to travel, and I want to go to an event that can make the most impact possible. And that's why I love the local event because I can just drive like 15, 20 minutes, and then bring my van out there, got a couple canopy, put a table up, and then you know, do for a few hours or for the day and head home, um, spend time with the family and the kids, as opposed to you know, the last time I went to Ion, um, took me one day. I mean. Thursday, I spent all Thursday flying, um, flight at 6 a.m., 
I didn't get there until like 8 or 10 p.m. So because of the transfer and all the good stuff, by the time I get there, car rental, get in a hotel, you know, 9, 10 o'clock, grab a bite and, you know, catch some shut eyes, wake up early in the morning and go there and then, you know, have to set up in the whole shebang and then uh, quickly fly back home. And um, got to come back home by Sunday night because got to be in the office by by Monday morning, right? So hopefully we are... Um, uh, we're not trying to overdo and then try to fall short of that. That's the reason why I'm kind of hesitant when a lot of people ask me to go to their event, um, and I, can, I don't want to commit to it because I, you know, I kind of fall short and I didn't want to. And then all of a sudden, oh, your KT didn't deliver what he promised, and uh, that's going to be like detrimental for me and for you guys. So uh, when I say that I'll do it, that means that you get 110 percent of my um, effort in there. All right, so I'm um, planning to go to Code Six Nine. Um, Alex, see you there, buddy. Um, definitely, I already booked um, for it, so I got my flight already. Um, my pallet just came back from Ion, so I'm gonna prep for it. It's gonna go out like uh, September, mid September. I'm gonna ship that pallet out and then prep everything up, clean, organize, regroup, and then um, ship the pallet out there again. So, um, Ion was, uh, I mean, you guys, I don't know if um, many of you have uh, been to Ion. The event in um, in Pennsylvania at skirmish uh, paintball. It's uh, it, you know, the event is called Invasion Normandy Iron for short. And a lot of people don't know that, but um, it is a fantastic event, man. It's uh, this year they get almost, from what I heard, over four thousand players out there. Of course, it's a it's a hopper event, but a lot of people ran Mac Fed out there. They have a great good time. It's like nobody left like unhappy with that event. Everybody helped. You know, left satisfy with the week um but it's, it's not like I said, it's not a true my friend event but you definitely can have a good time because there's so many people out there it's it's not just about playing sometimes it's about socializing hang out check out new beer and uh, see just meet people meet and greet shake hands so um but kill six nine i heard great things about it my first year here last year jonathan was out there and you guys know what happened our pallet didn't make it last year so this year you know i'm gonna ship my pallet mid of september um september 15 something like that i'll get it out and then make it there like a week or two weeks ahead of time so be sure to have it there i'm not gonna screw up this you know no way uh i'm not gonna be there and tour my thumbs and i'll my palate to make it so um yeah poor jonathan last year he was out there and man no palate nothing to do um but great thing that it's he met a lot of people shook a lot of hands and um he spent a lot of time out there so um, definitely, if you guys want to head out to a MacFed event, Kill the 6 9 is the event to go to. And if you're going to miss uh, Midwest somewhere, um, there is an event near coming up that's Neck Eater. And then West Coast, um, that is Operation N19, guys. So hopefully, see you out here. All right, so uh, we're currently right now. Let's talk about the, um, the auction for a little bit here. So 160 right now. Um, Daniel, he got 160 on this marker. This is a Blizzard SG-1 built with uh, a rail and a carry handle and a 4X, um, one number two X42 red dot scope. I love this scope. It is 2X, that means you get uh, the doubled optical zoom. Um, you can see things, of course, twice as close, of course, right? And then the red dot, let me see, I have green or red, just one color of red dot here. So you can rotate this dial right here and it let you kind of um, change the light intensity, let your eye kind of focus better. This is this is not, most people think that they can, uh, for, for aiming, it's not really for aiming, more like for snap shooting. So what it does, like, just pick it up and snap, snap, snap. So if you uh, practice enough, your eyes automatically focus on the red dot. It's kind of pick it up, pop, 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 pick it up, pop, 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 pick up, snap, snap, snap. That's what it does. And the, the height of this um, red dot, it's perfect so if you wear a mask it can be right about here let your shoulder properly and then you can actually have a great time with this all right um if you guys didn't see the video i can all play a quick video for you um see that i, I shot this video earlier right before we get on the show so kind of show you guys how to how to shoot so that we can get get excited excited on this uh setup all right, I'm gonna pull up the video really quick here before I switch my screen. Ba -ba. All right, 
here we go. This is a brand new build with a new uh, configuration with the rail and a carry handle. All right. With a new light bulb here. handguard. Oh. This is a brand new build with a new uh, configuration with the rail and a carry handle. With a new lightning bolt handguard here. So let's uh, see how it shoots. Got an orange magazine, so don't worry about the magazine. Back to back, shoot. All right, shoots great. So gonna swap out now the magazine. I love this clear magazine. You can see the projectile in the magazine this way. If you have a jam or a misfed or something like that, you can see exactly what's going on. Um, it looks pretty cool when you put it in um, your gun right there see how that is um, you can see how many rounds you have and if you are changing projectile you see exactly what's going on there so let's uh, stick some more target wow that's a pretty good shooter all right guys if you have any question comment all right uh, hopefully you guys see that video um, for the blizzard there right now top is daniel at 160 hopefully you can stay there daniel um some of these guys are gonna jump in at last minute and try to grab that someone asking about ship projectile okay so damien ship projectile i made the correction on that already so i'm hoping to have the final sample in about a week or two and gonna shoot it and if it's good to go then we're gonna start cranking it out on a production um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that hopefully by Operation N19 or by Kilo 69, I will have a bunch of them. Golden Van can handle you guys and check them out and do demos and tests there. Um, a lot of people been asking whether this projectile can shoot as well as First Strike and another shape projectile. Um, currently, honestly, it the, the, the test that I'm getting, I'm getting pretty close to it, but I cannot tell you. Uh, definitively until I do the final test on it and sometimes I would rather that telling you hey it's gonna shoot about 50 yards uh, with a spread of 12 inches that way you're not you know you don't over expect that it's gonna perform, perform like 100 yards and so on so that way you cannot get hey you know what it's gonna be a good projectile and if they turn out to be better than uh, what I'm saying telling you uh, yeah, that means it's good. All right, then tell you, oh, okay, I promise you the world, and it's not really performs that, then um, it's gonna be sad news. But I can tell you that you can definitely get 50 yards uh, with a 12 inch spread. That's the result that I'm getting right now. And, um, and next week, in about one or two weeks, if I get my my next sample um, and able to test it and get the similar result like that. That means we're golden, and um, like I said, we're I'm not go. We're not uh, making this projectile. We call the MSR to compete with first strike or other projectile. We made this so that way it's an alternative for you. It's, a, it's an option for mid range uh, players. Um, we're currently we're not aiming to make a long range projectile. We're currently aiming to make a mid range projectile, and with a price point where it is comparable for. You know, to play with round balls. Right now, you play round balls. You get a case of um, two thousand, and it's gonna run you about eighty bucks. Um, so with our projectile, you can expect about um, twenty cents to quarter. Um, you go play, and you get a bag, like say two or three hundred bucks. Two, two, say a bag of two hundred or three hundred. That's a day worth of paint on uh, for MacFed, and it's gonna cost you a similar amount or a little bit. A little bit more but not but not so um, far away right so that's what we're we're gunning for um, you guys are gonna play with shape rounds you know that this is gonna shoot a lot better because of the consistency I mean, we're not I mean, it, we're not talking about um, accuracy right we're talking about consistency able to get that shot so at a similar location um, 12 inch spread is pretty good and basically, you if you um, shoot a target and you shoot another one, it's gonna land at the similar spot rather than stray somewhere else. So that's our goal on the shape rounds. Oh, okay, under promise, over deliver. And that's <laughs> that's the goal, Garrett. I mean, if 
it's better to under promise and over deliver than over promise and under deliver um, we always talk about this that it's better that you guys found that the rounds works well better than what we're saying than opposed to worse than what we're saying um, so if uh, next week and tell you hey you know what uh, I'm shooting this thing again the, the, the test we did initially already achieved that and after making adjustment and we can get the same um, results that means we're we're ready and we're gonna have to push that out I mean right now there's really no point for us to do a rounds that shoot less than that right you gotta be 50 yards away and able to do at least no less than uh, 12 inch of spread otherwise the, you know that's like one foot radius is like a round nice target that's a, a human torso size um, a head size target there and you're able to have to shoot that every single shot um, about 50 yards away and that's looks like I've been I've been saying for a long time that that has been our goal we're not trying to hunt yard shot we're not trying to do um, the, the, the long range one that a lot of people want us to do because there are very few people actually gonna few, few feel that has that open area to shoot that long and very few people that gonna do that type of gameplay so um, doing a mid-range version is the way to go oh uh, snake eaters Brandon they had a snake eater event at Taylorville North Carolina at comment and decision I'm not sure about that event Brandon but uh, you have something you can post it up so that way we can uh, check it out so um, we can spread out the word and uh, get the um, get the word out for events all right, uh, 160. Yeah, Timothy Pharrell, 160 currently is for this little guy right here. This is the auction gun for this week. Um, we call this a Blizzard SG-1. And <laughs> you probably come away everything you see here. It is shot pretty cool. Um, right before I saw the show, I did a video for that. If you came in a little bit late, you kind of missed, but this, this is what we got. Um, do you feel like Phil will not allow um, FSR? Brandon, um, Phil will, right now, they are, the, the major problem with Phil is that they have a hard time um, making money from the rounds. That's, that's the first problem. It costs too much and people, um, people can't afford to shoot it. So, of course, they can't carry it. They can't carry it. They don't want to uh, support it. But based on what's going right now, the, the industry is changing and eventually uh, it's going to be a standard for fields and a standard for everyone else. Um, I think the biggest factor is for MacFed to grow is more people to play a MacFed event. And that will show the support behind the type of game that we're doing. And of course, if there's money to be made, people will participate. Um, there are some people who invest into fields, there are some people who invest in equipment, there will be people who invest into you know, manufacturing more stuff. We want the few company doing it, but I'm very sure there will be other people or other organization to um, participate in this industry as if there's money to be made. Um, monetary reward is you know, big, one of the biggest um, drive of innovation, right? So. Um, right now, the industry is kind of not as big. Um, if you guys, like I said, you right now we're a MacFed event. The biggest right now is for 400 players, and as opposed to the biggest MacFed event, I mean, biggest paintball event is 4,000 players. You're talking about 10 times, and there are a lot more Hopper event out there than MacFed. So you can see that you know the you know, like there's a big difference in what MacFed is. And what paintball actually is. So, not to say that you know about MacFed or anything, but it is growing sector. A lot of fields start to um, recognize it, and they do know it, and they do want to participate. But a lot of fields they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to um, engage MacFed players. They don't know how to support MacFed players. They don't know how to put games together, and they're still kind of behind on a factor. So. You guys have no feel, kind of walk them through what the equipment does, what it works, uh, what you're using, and the different options that's out there. A lot of people kind of downplay another company, downplay another product. 
um, I don't think we should say anything negative about any product or any company um, for the reason that it just reflects one product over the other. It's not, it's not really not true. If you guys look and get all the different markers out there, all the, all the different manufacturers out there, there's they, each one of those has a strength and has its weaknesses. So um, you have to be able to overcome them. So um, doesn't matter what field they use. Um, it doesn't matter what market they use and what field they're playing at. I think the uh, able to work together and support the fields and the store. That's how we do grow the MacFed scene. So. Um, and of course, a lot of uh, fields right now, a lot of individuals right now are trying to get into MacFed, uh, but they just don't know how to do it. So, um, you guys can uh, educate them, that'd be great. All right, Chilango, um, 180, congratulations, bud. Right now, you're at the top. After spoke to educated uh, field owner, eventually, I allow it after I did a few demonstration. He won't carry it, but he allows them now. He has insurance limit, uh, I'm sorry, for it, and he may uh, carry it in the near future. Um, so as you can see that um, Felix right there, just proof of point that, like I said, sometimes people don't understand it. People don't understand, they're they, they kind of concerned about it. Like, uh, you know, it's a really good point on that too. It's a PPQ pistol. When we first released it out um, a couple months ago, a lot of people say no, no, no. A lot of prevent promoters saying no, no, no. And when we show up an event, um, you know, kind of show them how the equipment work. Like I said, I have never been to a field where a field owner don't allow uh, the PPQ, never. So after showing how it works, hey, you know, you reload, it holds eight rounds. Um, of course, they use fuel paint, but they don't really care what 10, 20 shots, um, what's that gonna affect them? Um, and then, you know, the, you, you're a regular customer, you're buying a case of paint, you're playing, you enjoy it yourself. And most field owner, they either shoot a gun or own a gun. And of course, the PPQ has a really cool factor to it. And after they kind of shoot it, slide and move back, um, they love it. And of course, you know, that's gonna push to the scale a little bit. And then they'll allow, like I said, I've never been to a field where a field owner don't allow a PPQ. So you guys concerned about that, don't. Um, of course, it takes a little time to kind of get the information through but you know for a fact that it can be done oh hello Jennifer haven't seen you in a while well good to see you back well what's the auction for today Jennifer this is the auction for today this is right here the Blizzard SG-1 built with a rail and a carry handle of course the 2x42 red dot of course you can uh, get this marker on the site on a different aspect and different build but this one right here Built for auction today, right now. Um, Jennifer is $180. Somebody's on the top notch right now. I think uh, Chalenko's on top um, for this marker. I did a video right before I came on the show. I'll play for you guys a little one more time in the next couple minutes. You guys can check it out. One of the things I love about this marker the most is the build for you clean. You press a little button right there, you pull a little pin, it comes right out. You rotate this magwell, it comes right off. Um, you take the barrel off and then you can just dip into like a bucket of water right below right below the chamber here and then you take it out kind of you stir it a little bit in the bucket of water and then just dry for bump 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 clean the entire chamber out you're done good to go you don't have to worry about anything else and you're ready for the next event other markers with an integrated um, magwell well you can't really do that can you you can't take the magwell off you can't clean it All the most thing you can do is the barrel a um, lot of different things that you have to do. Well, some people love it, some don't. But the idea is that you, know, you can put a magwell in, lock into place, and then push the pin. Pretty much all our system that we did um, has this feature. Of course, Omar um, trying to do the Storm, Storm 1, you guys remember that one. Uh, fully integrated handguard and magwell. It was, it was a beautiful, beautiful design. It's probably one of the most ergonomic um, design that ever made. However, the bar is too big, hard to clean. That's why on the the, the, uh, the Gen 2 version, and of course that came out also Blizzard, we chop it up, we chop the handguard up, chop the magwell up, uh, allow you to kind of quickly remove, clean, service, repair, whatever you need to do. A lot easier for people to <laughs> to work on it. So now it's become a great feature to have. So keep that in mind when you get a marker. 
um, you have to clean it and suggest to clean it each time you use it making sure it's ready to go the next time a lot of people don't do that they went to the next time they use the clean by that time paint uh, debris whatever get caught inside all gum up and um, it, you're gonna have a hard time cleaning it and of course it create friction create jams and obviously it doesn't work well so this is uh, something to think about all right uh, next we're gonna vent my field all right Felix let me know um, so that we can help you support the event so where if you guys um, have an event and you guys are going to post up onto our calendar page you go to P B Cal that P B C L calendar dot com and you can post your event up and we help you promote it um, Javier how are you doing uh, hey <laughs> oh feet cap this Sunday um, I'm not gonna be out there but hopefully you guys have a good time Jonte um, 200 just get off of work did I miss anything on OEW 9 um, I'll barrel um, I'm gonna go over W9 a little bit W9 gonna be at USPN paintball this year it's a field um, I've been there numerous times and I love the field laid out they have um, in the center area is the staging area you have big picnic table um, bending area comes right in the middle and then they have multiple fields right around that means you can walk only her feet guys go through the netting area boom you go to the, uh, a gaming you start playing out air come back um, you walk on her feet you go back air it up add it again so the game that this the, 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 the idea behind this is that you have fast action games um, we tend to, we are thinking of not doing general we just have multiple um, platoon leaders and we hand out mission for you and just have multiple um, combat fight I mean multiple scenario going on at the same time and in the center of um, OAW9 I'm going to do a 5 on 5 shooting competition and um, the top winning team will the top winning team will win 5 PTRs fully built it's going to be great it's, 5 PTRs like it's over 5,000 I was saying that you know in the past and other event you go to usually the um, the way you win prize is that you you know you get a little ticket and they do a raffle and you end up winning on a draw but you know, we do a little bit different we tend to do a little bit of competition you win on your skills and sometimes luck but partly skill and you have to compete for it you know we do STL drill too so when we go to an event we do STL drill um, you get good time you win and um, this year our first annual nine we do a five on uh, five and five shooting competition more details gonna be open up for you guys but the idea is that it can be a fast-paced game um, you, know, you know in the past we did the the event at uh, in Copperopolis and it's an open piece of dirt um, it's gonna, it's a lot of work um, setting it up every year so this year we're gonna take a little step back and um, and relax a little bit and and, and and have a little more fun hopefully um, I have time to get in the field with you guys but hopefully all right um, Brandon MCS Brown comes out I would try uh, and show them <laughs> well the um, Brandon the we, we what we do is we're trying to set it up for fields and hopefully we can get more field to support um, the Mac Fed scene a little bit more. I believe that once the shape rounds, if not our rounds and other rounds come out, I believe that fields will be more susceptible to um, Mac Fed because this actually the, the, that's a differentiation for Mac Fed and regular paintball. They can actually create a whole new genre just for Mac Fed um, because of, we have enough equipment now, enough variety in markers. We have good projectile. Now you can actually create a different genre for that. And okay, you want to play MagFed? It is using this projectile only, and you can play the game like this. Um, of course, they can easily um, upcharge the registration fee a little bit, and now no more round balls because now everyone using shape rounds or um, first strike or what's not, and you don't have to worry about anybody cheating. Everybody gonna chrono with, with with shape rounds. No more round ball chrono. So everybody gonna shoot the same speed using. Uh, the same or similar system and there's no question about oh 
shooting high, shooting low, chrono ground balls, this and that. They've just one way of doing things. Right now, that's that's the reason why um, paintball have always set a standard, right? You you do round balls, everybody shoot the same speed. Um, you deviate from a little bit. Well, <laughs> step out, buddy. You know, we chrono that. But now you get people who chrono round balls and go shoot first strike or shape rounds. That's a 30 feet per second difference. That's a 10%. I mean, that's a 10% more uh, better uh, in velocity. And with shape rounds, you get another 30% in range and accuracy. Well, you don't call that a, like a, a um, unfair advantage. Well, it actually is unfair advantage. And uh, you know, and the worst thing about it is a lot of these players they play against newbies where they just barely get into the sport and they just getting started and it's kind of deter them from coming back um, of course you know it, it's like it's one of those things where you try and nurture um, the sport and try and get the new people in at the same time you're trying to deter those people from coming back it's it's kind of that's that's why I believe that MagFed will change once the, the rounds coming out where um, if not ours, then somebody else. If not, first strike and low down the price. Either one of those where it makes sense for people to play, right? So right now, 100 rounds cost you about 40 bucks. What if we cut that in half, right? So 100 round costs you $20. Um, and so right now, you go to an event, it costs you about 80 bucks, four bucks, 2,000. So what if it costs you 40 bucks for 200, or 80 bucks uh, for 400, or something like that? Now that you have enough paint to play for an entire day, um, equipment cost. Because MacFed, you're not gonna shoot that many rounds. So per trigger pool and gameplay, about the same. So I think that's where the, that's where MacFed's gonna be and I think that's where the future of our sport gonna be. Alright, Chilango 240 bud, thank you. Oh um, uh, let's see here. Alright so um, I'm gonna do one last um, shout for the auctions so anybody who came in late can have a chance to check it out I'm gonna play a quick video for you guys so that way you can see what the uh, the, 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 the auction it's about um, the video I did just earlier today right before we're gonna show um, on the market itself I I make a point to shoot it so you can see uh, so you get to get excited on it so here goes oops oh man uh, later here play this is a brand new build with a new uh, configuration with the rail and a carry handle or the new lightning bolt handguard here. So let's uh, see how it shoots. Got an orange magazine, so don't worry about the magazine. Back and back, shoot. All right, shoots great. So gonna swap out another magazine. I love this clear magazine. You can see the projectile in the magazine this way, if you have a jam or a misfed or something like that, you can see exactly what's going on. Um, and it looks pretty cool when you put them through um, your gun, right there, see how that is? Um, you can see how many rounds you have, and if you are changing projectile, you see exactly what's going on there. So let's uh, stick some more target. That's a pretty good shooter. Alright guys, if you have any question, comment. Right, so that's the auction. So we're gonna go over one last time and we're gonna end the auction at exactly 6 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, of course. That's about 13 minutes from now. So this is it. Um, the auction for this week, this is a Blizzard SG-1 come with a um, rail right here, carry handle. It looks kind of destined, uh, kind of destined carry handle, but it's not. A um, little more rail to it, more tackle to it, more like looks like a G36 carry handle, if you will. Of course, come with this red dot scope. If you guys want the internal air with the tank, of course, it's already cast internal air, but you want an air tank, let us know. We can upgrade that for you. Basically, you buy the tank. If the tank's like 60 bucks, something like that, you buy the tank and we swap the whole thing for you. So, you want that, let us know. We can do that. You want more magazine? Come with one magazine. You want more magazine? Let us know. We'll add more magazine for you. So, this is the, uh, the setup right here. Right now, um, yeah, Shilongo um, is a top bidder at 240. So you guys want to add it? Um, you have 10 minutes to do that. Like I said, at uh, exactly 6 p.m., I'll call it off, and you guys a little behind. I'm sorry. All right, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mac Buck. Uh, he sent me this patch. 
um, he heard that I, I, I reason I start out um, collecting patch because I went to a lot of events and people been giving me their patches, the team patch and so on. So I'm um, I have a wall pretty soon. Um, once I have enough of it, I'll show you guys um, my patch collection. Um, so thank you, Mac, um, for sending your patch. It's pretty cool. Um, I love the scorpion and the um, <laughs> the wings here. So guys. Um, have a patch you want to send to me for my wall send it to me and i'll show it thank you guys i'll oh, thank you back all right guys um if you guys look into um go to opera's m19 out here in the um in the west coast uh, hit me up and then um see if we can do something for you um of course the weekend we don't open weekend so you guys coming out on the west coast here let me know i see you can open a weekend for you um, we plan to do a couple different things, but um, it's not solidified yet. So as we get closer to the event and have a couple of plans that I have that's currently in place, I'm able to get that for you. All right, Joseph Rojas just posted West Coast Adventure Park this Sunday for Mac Fed Paintball located okay, at 7101 Ion Road. So you guys going to uh, play an event and Mac Fed up, you guys want to ask West Coast uh, in the Bay Area somewhere. Um, go out to West Coast Adventure Park. They actually it's a huge field. Uh, been there numerous times. You guys gonna love the the, the field that they have. A couple different fields. Um, met the field owner Anthony. He's great. Um, so you wanna head, you know wanna play a Mac Fed event this weekend? Definitely uh, go out there and um, see Mac Fed Legion. They'll set you up. Need loaner and stuff. They have a fleet of loaners of markers there. So you guys. Um, want to try MacFed, they have a loaner marker for you. Speak of loaner, we, I mean, MCS, you know, we actually put hundreds of markers out there in the world um, for our ambassadors, for our sponsor team, for fields, they have it out there. So you guys want to go to and try MacFed, visit our website, check out the calendar, and then uh, visit the ambassador page and, you know, contact them and find out where they're at and you need to test the markers before you buy, go see them. Um, a lot of them don't have our, don't have MCS markers. They have pretty much every brand out there. So uh, a great opportunity for you to, to test out a marker before you buy. Of course, you know, we're, uh, we're not exclusive to any of the brand. We don't, you know, kind of say, you know, we'll sponsor team, you have to use our markers, our product. Um, it's not like that, our sponsor team ambassador use anything they want as long as they enjoy doing it and using it so um, don't worry about being biased some do of course some love our stuff but a lot of them they use pretty much a full range of markers um, so you, like I said you have a, that opportunity to, to test out they offer it to you to kind of see the equipment and try the equipment so before you buy it um, Sometimes you don't have that opportunity. You kind of buy something. Oh, you know what? I didn't like that, and you get stuck with a mark or having to return it. Um, you're wasting time, resources for everybody. So, if you are thinking of getting a marker, get with one of ambassadors, and they'll be more than happy to show you what they have. More than happy to kind of show you their loadout, what they use, what they don't like, what they do, what works for them, what's not work for them. So. Um, give you kind of leg up on getting to the sport as opposed to you know, go buy all this gear and oh you know what it become um, paperweight so I, I hear a lot of that too so um, you can avoid that too, altogether you know the best <laughs> the old saying goes right uh, you learn from mistakes and the best is to learn from other people's mistakes not your own so if you stick to that formula you probably able to overcome most obstacles not all I can't, I can't promise you that, but you can definitely learn from other people's mistakes and capitalize on that. All right, John Miles, uh, how you doing, bud? Haven't seen you in a while. Oh uh, man, uh, Felix, uh, let's see what you got here. Tough man, don't give up. Uh, Dealing with demonstrate. <laughs> it's that's the way it goes, you know. You are. Um, I've been doing the Mac Fed for almost 20 years. When I first started out, I was doing the RAM um, 0.43 caliber markers. I was pushing and promoting it, put games together. Um, one of the you know, games that we did back here in the West Coast is um, 0.43 caliber. 
and it never really took off because the equipment there's not enough to go around and support from the supply wasn't there um, us we one of the many company but it didn't didn't take off at all so hopefully um, I think 43 caliber reach I'm sorry 68 caliber has enough support behind it and a bunch of manufacturer behind it so it, it can, will grow eventually all right Shilango still at 260 I know um, Wilfredo right there trying to beat you off there but you you know you hear him off stick to it buddy <laughs> John I'm doing well thank you very much um, been doing a lot putting a lot of hours lately John trying to get some of this project done it's reached to maturity I'm finishing up the uh, the shape rounds it's around the corner I mean the shape round right now almost off my hands right now everything been laid out for it. material been selected uh, I did tests on it already so it's um, it's right now I'm on the final 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 stage of it next about one to two weeks I'm doing the last um, last final test on it because I have to make a slight adjustment to it for the assembly process to be easier so hopefully that didn't change the um, geometry didn't change the dynamic of projectile so next uh, about one or two weeks I will give you guys the great news that we have achieved 50 yards with a 12 uh, with a foot um, spread and once that great news coming out then we're gonna start to do a countdown clock um, I'm gonna post the, the, the on a site that can be a countdown clock and that will tell you exactly when shape brown is going to hit the shelf um, during that time you're going to get a lot of our ambassador a lot of fields a lot of key people going to putting out test results that they're getting so um, great things going to be uh, on the, around higher horizon so at that point you can actually pre-order and all good stuff so it'll be a lot of fun for us i think we're achieving uh, a long dream seven years in the making so you know almost a decade if I could drag this you know of three more years I can call a decade long project I don't know about you guys but um, I'm almost speechless sometimes when thinking about it it's seven years it's a long time for one single project of this magnitude it will it'll be a lot of fun for us here at MCS to uh, bring this product into reality so hopefully you guys have a chance to shoot and enjoy like us here all right Shilongo at 310 buddy um, you got four more minutes guys if you want to take this off um, and play this you get you get four more minutes to auction this off <laughs> um, let's see here um, if you miss any USPN paintball located in Hollister um, August 12th that's another event guys if you guys want out here in the west coast for another event it is uh, uh, August 12th I'm more than like likely gonna be out there Ooh, I have a wedding I have a wedding on the 13th uh, actually I have a wedding on the 11th so 12 I think it's on Saturday or Sunday right I have to double check the calendar again guys um, just to make sure one, I believe that one of the day I have um, a wedding either on the 11 or the 12th I have to double check so to make sure guys um, but if the wedding is not on I'll be out there um, to hang out with you guys for that weekend it's gonna be a lot of fun but I'll confirm um, shortly after the um, after the show So uh, we got three more minutes. You guys have any question this time? Go ahead and post it up, and then uh, I can answer for you. Uh, any update? What's not? Go ahead and push it out, um, so I can give you any update that's that's coming up. All right, guys. Uh, look like there were no more question, but um, we got two more minutes into the auction. I think Shilongo gonna take this thing home and enjoy it. Um, I love the blizzard it's a really rock solid marker if you guys have a chance to I'm mean, a lot of people um, concerned about the blizzard mag uh, insert if you put it in just like this and push it in it will lock right in of course you depress you just pull it out um, I know that there are a lot of markers that you kind of butter it in but as a beginner if, if 
if you put it in and put it out it just go right in. You know, insert confident if not you can do boom just tap and it goes right in if not just pull right out if you really want to make it a little more smoother you can get like uh, sandpaper just sand inside of this magwell and will wear out faster if you don't mind and you use this like a couple different games it will go in right in and you have no problem inserting your magazine so something to remember that it does go in with just a push um, but if you want it even smoother get in front of TV and just do a reload practice reload practice reload and that will come in a lot smoother if you want to speed up the process just get some sandpaper, stand it off, and you all set. So, uh, any news on the tornado? Um, Alex, tornado is pretty much done. Um, I think next week I should have the final version of it. And once I get the final version, I'm gonna start posting the R&D video like I talked about. Um, it has really awesome features in the tornado and I'll show you guys um, that feature as it come close first of its kind to implement to paintball gun you'll be amazed um, I you know some of you guys have seen it have visited the um, MCS and you get seen in person but most of you guys have not seen it you um, will you will definitely be at all of that new feature that uh, we put in. All right, Shalango, congratulations on winning this marker. 310 is your winning bid. Thank you for participating in the um, the MCS weekly auction. You will not be disappointed with this um, gun. Uh, every week, of course, we're at auction, but definitely some week we built um, a high-end version and low-end version but like I said I, I, my goal is not to do a high-end version as much kind of mid-range about 300 bucks something like that that way you more people can participate right so congratulations and I, you will definitely enjoy this all right guys um, about Mox Carlos what project will come right after uh, I think I missed right here right after the new round box mag Box mag, I'm looking at box mag in this year, tornado will be this year, um, shape rounds. I have a couple different small projects coming out this year. And then after that, I'm gonna be put all my time and attention on the um, on the hydra and the pistol. So right now I, I do I put very little time in it, almost none at all because of the operation and as well as this project. Putting this project out will definitely put us into a position where we can do more projects right now. You guys know um, R&D money is super, super expensive. And then after that, you have to manufacture it, uh, make mold for it. It's, it costs enormous amount of resources, which we currently don't have, but we're getting there. Um, that's why I kind of always like to do a universal product. I mean, uni uni <laughs> uni universal project where a product that can work on almost any system out there and that way that everybody have any type of markers or um, setup they can use it as opposed to making a, a product that just fix that one gun or one system so um, hopefully um, we have this out sooner allow us to invest in back into more project get more cool things for you guys um, <coughs> you're welcome John I when I go to an event, um, my, I, my my goal is to get everyone on the field. If you have a problem with your marker, just get with me. Um, if I can't fix it, I'll loan something out for you. So um, if I can, can't can fix it, more than likely, I'll trade something out for you so you can have into the game. I'm, you know, I, I, there there's no, now, it's, there's no pleasure of keeping a player out off the field, right? Because you guys spend a lot of time um, going to an event, a lot of resource being put to an event, and all you want to do is just have a good time. And if I'm out there, I'll make sure that you're going to stay in the field. Um, I'll do whatever it takes to make it happen. If you have another markers where um, one that not by us and you need a loaner, if I have it, I'll get you a loaner. If not, then I'll work something out for you to make sure that you stay in the field. Um, I know a lot of people come to me. Um, get the gun fixed from other manufacturer I try a lot of times I can't do anything because I don't have the part but um, if I can use a part that I can take off on the gun that I have I'll make sure that happen and get you on the field 
All right, guys, thank you so much. Oh, actually, I was going to say, welcome, John. Um, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure. All right, guys, thank you so much for being part of the show on the MS uh, MCS Weekly. I really appreciate that you guys being part of the show. Hopefully, I guess to see, I get to see you guys out at the field at an event somewhere. Um, get to meet you, shake your hands, and kind of greet me. So, have a good night, and enjoy the... Just enjoy your night. Take care, guys. And I hope to see you guys out at the field sometime. Take care. I'm gonna play a quick ending video, so um, <laughs> it's like an intro, right? This is a brand new build Oops. with a new Long video, uh, configuration yeah. with a rail and a carry handle. All right. Oh, this one. It's this video.